we've done a real imaginary part. I want to use this modulus thing. Okay, so let's just take that line, right? Uh, I'll need this amount of space. Mod Z equals mod W. Now I know a whole lot about Z and W, right? Uh, in fact, I know even more than I did when I first wrote them, right? I know that mod Z is going to be mod cos theta plus I sine theta. And I now also know that mod W is, well, don't know anything about cos alpha yet. I will soon. I don't have to write over here plus I sine alpha, do I? I know more about I sine alpha now. I'm going to replace it with negative a minus I sine theta. Do you agree with that? Okay, now if you know where a complex number is, if you know its coordinates, how do you find the modulus to that point? I'll give you, yeah, I, I heard it, right? I'm, I'm gonna need to take the square root. It's on the hypotenuse of something, right? So what are the um, two shorter sides? If this is the, the C, right? What are the A and B in this triangle? Hmm. If I have um, the coordinates here, cos theta plus I sine theta, theta, this is the horizontal length of the triangle, and this is the vertical length of the triangle. Do you agree? Yep. Okay. So actually, the square root underneath here is going to be A squared plus B squared. You with me? Okay. It's just that my A happens to be cos theta. And my B happens to be sine theta. I mean, we could swap those. It wouldn't matter. Okay. All right. What about this side? Square root. The x value. There's the horizontal value. That's how far away I have to go. So I've got cos squared alpha. Where's this going to go? Hmm. Now this is um, this is going down, isn't it? Do you agree with that? That is what gets squared. But since it's squared, it's going to become a length, isn't it? So it actually doesn't matter. That negative sign ends up being not consequential. Okay. Uh, are the wheels turning yet? I can do something with this, right? I'm going to get a lot of inside out of this. Firstly, I'm going to square everything. That leaves me with this. I'm going to evaluate that, that these brackets around here. So that leaves me with this. Okay, now what would you like me to do? Um, Answer one, two. Okay. Now what? Hmm. Okay. Now I'm gonna write the line before the line Ethan suggested. Right. This is just getting rid of the sine squares. Okay. We know we we've learned as a very painful lesson. Right. That even though cos theta equals cos alpha is a solution to this, it's not the only one. Right. There's another one. If you take the cos squared alpha over the other side, you've got difference of squares, you can factorize, right? And you're going to get these two as your solutions. Do you agree with that? Those two will be your solutions, okay? Hmm. Now we know which one we want to be the solution, right? Which one do we want? Yes. We, we want them both to be the same, right? So therefore, in some way, you have to deal with this guy, right? And by the way, I've seen many students, I've marked many solutions of students before where they're like, ah, I, I, I don't want the negative one. I, I, I'll just, just get rid of it or I won't write it, okay? There's a <laughs> mark. There's a mark specifically on that negative sign and you resolving it, right? You have to show that you know it's there and then tell me why I can get rid of it because we can't, right? Any ideas? Any ideas? Be because? <laughs> what do you reckon, Harry? It can't be negative because then um, cos theta plus um, minus or plus cos alpha would be cos theta minus cos theta, which is zero, not negative one. Ah, okay, hold on a second. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Maybe you need to rewind a little bit, right? Do you remember earlier on we wrote, because we considered the real parts of both sides, we wrote this. Do you remember that? Yeah. And we were like, well, true, but mm, so, so what, right? We didn't know what to do with that, okay? But now I do know what to do with it, okay? Have a look at this. Consider what the two solutions are. Yes. Consider what they are, right? Let's consider if the negative case is true. If cos theta uh, equals, sorry, negative cos alpha. Well, what would that mean? That would mean if you add cos alpha to both sides, that would mean that cos theta plus cos alpha is equal to zero. zero. But, but it can't be. It, it can't be, right? Because I concluded before it was negative one. So this cannot be true. Right? 
Do you see that? I mean, I guess I would say if I was not so lazy, I would say it's a contradiction because I know cos theta plus cos alpha is equal to a different value to that. So therefore, this can't be, can't be the case. Right, does that make sense? Therefore, the only alternative I have is the positive one. So therefore, cos theta equals the positive one only. Does that make sense? Okay, now I'm pretty much there. Remember, I, I kind of ran into this um, brick wall. Well, I don't have a brick wall anymore because I can say, just like I did over here, this relationship is cos theta plus cos theta again, because I just found out they're the same, is equal to negative one. Okay, what would you like me to do with that? Two cos theta is is negative one, right? Yeah. Which, <laughs> I, I saw where your brain was going. Your brain was going to this line, which is negative a half. Okay. Now I know what the domain of theta is. Okay. So where is cos theta going to be negative a half? Here we go. Here's the um. Uh, whoops. Negative pi to pi. Oh yeah, that's that's okay. Right. Negative pi to pi. At which two points? Because remember, I've got two numbers. At which two points is cos theta, this is the cos graph, equal to, there's negative one, where's negative a half? Um, it's going to be here <laughs> and here. Do you agree? And I think if you check your numbers, you should find that's 120 degrees, because that's 90, right? Which, uh, we're in radians land, right? What would you write that as? 2 pi and 3, very good. Right? Now, I've written both because if theta is 2 pi on 3, that means alpha is um, negative 2 pi on 3. Or they just swap. It doesn't matter which one's which. Okay. Ooh. Have we answered the question? No. Ah, we're so very close. We've done all the hard part. Okay, we've done the hard part. So what I can say is, therefore, z is equal to, all right, let's just designate it one of them. Let's just call that uh, the positive one. That makes this the negative one. Oops, there should be a, s sorry. Oh yeah, that's, that's fine. There we go. So I've got my positive one, my negative one, and then I'd say W, uh, sorry, one is, is where it is. And then I'd literally just draw that. I'd just draw it. It doesn't have to be huge or beautiful, but you can see the equilateral triangle there. You don't have to labor that point. You're done. Okay. So you say, which is, a, which is an equilateral triangle? Yeah, I would, I would draw that diagram. I draw that diagram. I place these two two points alongside one, right? And you're home, okay? 